Hey everybody, it's Claire from The Recovering Perfectionist. Uh, today's video blog is about outsourcing and you've probably heard me wax lyrical about outsourcing in the last couple of weeks, but bear with me, this will be a very quick one. I just want to talk about the three main benefits and the three probably kind of unexpected things maybe that you might get out of outsourcing some jobs, particularly if it's um, a VA sort of a style when you're in your business, but it applies to pretty much everything if you're getting a cleaner or something like that in your home as well. So I just want to tell you a little bit about my outsourcing journey to date because it has been a little bit up and down. Um, probably about this time last year, I hired my first VA and I, in my mind, she was going to do a little bit of stuff for me and a little bit of stuff for my clients. And then as my business grew and I had all these beautiful ongoing clients, it became very obvious that I was doing some work that was sort of taking me away from the higher level strategy and coaching stuff and I was starting to do some of the admin stuff. So I got really clear on how I was going to divide some of those tasks and what sort of things I was actually going to hand over and outsource to my team of VAs on behalf of my clients. It was all completely above board and my clients knew exactly what was going on and they were also saving money because I didn't need to charge them as much for my time. So um, I guess what that sort of helped me do and helped my clients do was, was a couple of things, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, what I'd like to sort of start by saying is that I have, I've been talking a lot about outsourcing in the last couple of weeks and something really interesting has come up time and time again. And every time I've had a client who's been thinking about um, getting some help or a VA or something like that, the same things always seem to come up. So some of the um, objections or the concerns that people have when they're first starting to think about getting a VA is that it's going to cost too much money or that they're going to spend more time um, training someone new than it would take just to do it themselves or that they're, they're handing over the keys to their baby, they're handing over lots of information, there's lots of IP things that, um, that might come into play. You don't want to be giving away all of your beautiful you know, recipes and your secrets and that sort of thing. Um, so there's a big trust factor in there as well. And then some of the other practical things like how do I find them? How do I make sure that I get the right person? How do I make sure I'm not getting ripped off? So I'll talk about most of those in probably in another video blog, but basically what I want to tell you is you can get a really, really great VA for about seven to 10 Australian dollars an hour. There is no minimum required and there's no maximum required. So if you have um, a time when you're starting out, you might only need someone for half an hour a week. You might need someone for five hours a week and then one week you might have a launch or a project or something you're working on and you need them for 10 or 20 hours a week. Um, there's no, there, there's ways to do it so that there's no locked in contracts, there's no nothing that, that um, no one's relying on you so you don't have to have that guilt factor about making sure that you're paying someone and all of that sort of thing. I'll talk about some of those logistics in another video blog but that's a really simple one. You're not locked into anything. Um, in terms of uh, it taking longer to hand over and train someone in whatever it is that you want them to do, being slower than just getting them to do it. In some cases, that is true. But when you're going through that process, what you're probably going to be doing is documenting. What you are going to be doing is documenting. That's my number one tip. So that anything that's repeatable, anything that happens more than once in your business, you're creating what we call either an SOP, which stands for Standard Operating Procedure, which is basically corporate speak for um, a list of or a list of tasks that need to be done in order to complete a project or a thing. So say for example, if you have a blog, your list of tasks, your SOP might look like, I write my blog, I put it in Dropbox, then my VA would come into Dropbox, get that, put it on my website, create a newsletter, create some social media posts and schedule those out, all of that sort of thing. So that's what becomes an SOP. Um, and there's a few different ways you can do that, which I'll talk about in a moment as well. Um, and then what happens then is, yes, the, probably the first time, maybe even the first two or three times, will probably take a little bit longer. But then once it's repetitive and it's repeatable and that other person has gotten used to it and they've gotten really fast at it, it starts saving so much time. So if it's something that happens, say, once a month or once a quarter or once a week or every day, you can imagine how quickly that starts adding up in terms of your time and therefore how quickly that can start getting handed off. Okay, so anyway, there's a couple of little objections that I just wanted to kind of overcome for you if you're thinking about it. And I know it's scary. I know it's really hard to give people passwords and all of that sort of thing, but there are some other safety nets that you can put in place as well. We'll talk about that later. 
Anyway, on to the main things. So the three main things that I think you'll get from, um, from starting to outsource. Number one is that it makes you, especially when there's a budget involved, it makes you really, really aware and really um, clear on what your priorities are. When you look at your to-do list and you think, right, I've only got a limited budget of say $100 a week or $50 a week to get someone to help me do some tasks. What's really important and what can I, what really needs to get done? So it's a really great kind of filter to help you work out what actually needs to be done. So if you've got things that are kind of not all that important, you're not gonna go and throw your last pennies at them. You're not gonna go and spend money training people to get it done when it's something that doesn't really need to be done. So it's a really good filter to, to work on with that. The second thing is that it obviously does help you nut out and um, get consistent with some of those processes like I was talking about before, the SOPs. So every time, say if it's something that you do semi-regularly, like every month or every two months, how often does it happen that you go, oh, okay, I'm gonna sit down and do that thing again and I sit down and you start and you're like, right, what's the first thing I need to do? Oh, I need to do that. Oh shit, I should have, I should have probably done that thing first. And then uh, I'll add this bit in as well. And oh, I've always been thinking about doing such and such. And a task that should take you half an hour ends up taking you two hours, two days, whatever, or it doesn't get done at all because you just procrastinate and you add little things in all of the time. So when you hand it over, I'm talking quite clearly about admin stuff here, but when you hand over things like that to an admin, there's two ways to do it. You can either step them through exactly how you want them to do it. You can have an SOP already designed. You can say, first you do this and here's the link and next you do this and here's the link and then you do this and da 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 and here's a template and all that sort of thing. Have that all mapped out. If you want to do it that way, go nuts. However, when you hire a VA, especially an admin VA, they're probably better at it than you are. Right, I had this thing with um, when I first started, I would think, okay, I need to get her to do this task A. And I think that would probably take me about, say, 45 minutes, but I'm pretty quick at it. So I'll give her like an hour and a quarter. So I'll say, you know, this is the task and this is my expectation of what it needs to look like when it's finished. And I would expect it to take you no longer than an hour and a quarter. And she'd be like, yeah, no worries. And then half an hour later, come back and be like, okay, it's done. Oh, so she ended up being so much faster than my expectation and even faster than I would have been because I wouldn't have been getting distracted and being going, oh, and I'll just do this and I'll just do this. She's sticking to the mainframe. She's sticking to the plan. She's sticking to what needs to be done and not getting distracted. And she's really good and really fast and all of that sort of thing. So there's the first thing. The other thing is because these people are professional admin people, they are probably going to be um, as good, if not better, at coming up with that process or expediting it or speeding it up or um, automating things and that sort of thing. So actually, if you're comfortable and when you're comfortable, because it will happen, to say, oh, I kind of need this thing to happen. And like I say with a newsletter, I really want my newsletter to go out every week and it needs to have links to my blog. So my blog needs to go on my website and it needs to have a promo and it needs to have a little bit about me and it needs to have a link to blah, 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 all of this sort of stuff rather than um, stepping all of that out, let them do it. Then they can say, okay, well, I've done this before. I know how to make it really quick. And they can add automations in. And they can add you know, links and different systems and things that go over my head that are just amazing and make everything so much quicker and so much more automated. So there's two options. You don't have to completely have everything stepped out before, um, before they get there, all right? You can if you want, but you don't have to. Um, and the third thing that I really think um, outsourcing does is it well it's kind of three four and five it helps you let go of your own perfectionism and like I said when you see how much quicker and more effectively and efficiently someone else can do the job that you were kind of holding on to for dear life you would be like oh okay cool well I can you know it kind of builds your confidence so that you can hand more things over to them to give yourself some more space and time to do that beautiful thing that you're supposed to be doing so that you're on purpose and not just doing all of the admin because it was too hard to give it to someone else okay so it gets you over your perfectionism. It also just gives you a bit of breathing room. Imagine, imagine having this thing on your list for six months or a year saying, I want to send out monthly newsletters and you only manage to get them sent out you know, every now and then, once a month or once every two months or whenever you think of it and you can be bothered and you got to the end of doing that whole process before you got distracted by some YouTube video that popped up on Facebook or whatever. Um, and it actually gives you that kind of confidence to just hand more things over. And it's a, it's a really interesting process and I'd love to hear your feedback if you ever do start um, outsourcing things. 
that it doesn't take long for it to kind of get a snowball because you can see you're maybe paying, even if you're paying someone 20 bucks an hour to do some work and you're charging yourself out at 50 bucks an hour, it's a no-brainer. You could be making 50 and spending 20, which means you're actually making money to pay someone else money to do stuff for you that you don't really enjoy doing that much anyway. Anyway, I get a bit ranty about that sort of thing. So <laughs> I hope that's all made sense. I hope that's been helpful. Um, this absolutely is not an upsell. I'm not doing the outsourcing thing anymore in terms of outsourcing my people. Um, but I absolutely love helping people set up and get ready for their VAs and for their teams and all of that sort of thing. My background's also been in HR and recruitment, so I can definitely help find the right people as well. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've got any questions, comments, queries, um, anything like that. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, otherwise, I'll see you soon. I'll see you next time. Bye.